Hello, and welcome back to Mini Adventures Mini. So, for this video, I'm just putting this brief introduction in just to do a little bit of channel update and cleanup here. Uh, I haven't had any videos up for the last couple of weeks. Mostly, honestly, it's just completely my own fault. Uh, it started off with me having a bad, well, not a super bad, but a, a bit of an allergic reaction to something I haven't had any issues with in the past. So it kind of snuck up on me. I was basically unconscious for about three days on antihistamine medicine, and that kind of spiraled out of control and led to me being kind of lazy for a good week and a half or so. But I'm hoping to get back on track, and I'm starting with this video, though I may have further interruptions over the next couple weeks as my housing situation uh, may be shifting. I have roommates moving out, and I may have to move my entire setup into other rooms or other floors of the house that I'm in, so that may interrupt flow over the next couple weeks, but I'm hoping to try and get back on a normal schedule here. So with that out of the way, um, I'm just planning on doing this one for this Hydra from the Artisans Guild Amazon's Kickstarter that happened at the end of last year. It's a really cool model, and uh, you'll notice with this one, uh, it's actually printed with the FDM style printer, the more traditional printer, rather than the resin one that I use. Uh, I have a relative who picked up an old, I guess I wouldn't call it old, but an Ender 3 not too long ago and has been playing around with it. And I let them use the file to try out their printer and see how they liked it, and they gave it to me. Uh, I've also been wanting to try painting an FDM printed miniature just to see how it turns out and what the differences are when trying to paint it and whatnot and I'm surprisingly okay with the results I, I actually liked how it turned out though I will probably primarily stick to my resin printer in the future so with that let's go ahead and jump in and I'll show you how I painted this FDM printed Hydra miniature all right, so here you can see the before images of this uh, FDM printed Hydra. It, Like I said, it does look surprisingly good. It's only until you start looking really, really close that you can see some of the layer lines and imperfections you get from the FDM method. Um, but overall, and just looking at it from like a normal arm's length on a table, I don't think it will be overly noticeable. And I feel like I did a good enough job on the paint job that that will help uh, prevent people from, you know, like looking to care, uh, like getting too much closer or whatnot. It, for, from its intended viewing distance, it looks pretty good. So I'm pretty satisfied. Uh, like I said, I'll probably stick more to my resin in the future, but this was a fun experiment and I'm not at all dissatisfied with how it came out. But, uh,. Onto the method. Um, I'm mostly using my airbrush for like 90% of this miniature. Uh, starting with my dark gray Panzer Gray primer to coat everything, and then moving on to these Liquitex Artist inks in a medium gray and a white to do just a quick uh, Zenithil coating. Uh, you can see that this miniature didn't have a base, so I'm trying to be careful and using this paper towel to rotate it and get my Zenithil in there as best I can so that I don't touch too much of the wet ink. But I start with the medium gray and then I go at about a 90 degree angle and hit everything with the white. And then I come over and I use this green Liquitex Artist ink and I thin it down just a little bit in the airbrush and start uh, gently coating everything in this green. I'm trying to do my best not to overdo it as I have with using this method in the past so I'm being very light and judicious and building layers up s as slowly as I can manage while trying to cover everything and get it the right color. Uh, in this case I think it came out very well. I did manage to get everything looking properly green but you do get the very nice light transitions from the dark areas below up onto the sides and the back and the tops of the head which are a much more vibrant green than the darker greens on the underside and overall I'm really happy with the way that turned out and it looks fantastic. Um, and next I'm coming in here with this yellow artist ink and I'm trying to get kind of the yellow underbelly effect you see on lizards and snakes and whatnot. 
and this also turned out really well. Uh, I didn't dilute the yellow on this one, I'm just using it straight, but the the inks that come out from these artist inks are already slightly transparent. So just being slow and working my way up, I get kind of a transparent color, which the yellow on top of this green ends up being more of a yellow green rather than just a straight up yellow, and it blends very well into the existing green and looks fantastic. And I spend uh, quite a bit of time just building this up to what I want it to be. Uh, making sure that the darker areas on the underside of the necks actually look like they're yellow and not just more dark green or black or whatnot. And uh, I almost maybe overdo it a little bit on like the chest area, but in the end I think it still looks great. So I just keep working on this and uh, applying this, building the color up, getting that nice yellow tone. As you can see, uh, because of the way I'm using the airbrush and being careful with it, it feathers very nicely and blends into the green, so you got a nice smooth transition, except for where the scales uh, create that natural barrier and you get more of a hard breakoff point, uh, which also looks really good for the way it is. So I feel like I'm getting a lot better at using the airbrush as a tool like this, and it definitely helps with getting these larger minis painted in a timely manner. But now that I've gotten that groundwork done, go ahead and move the camera in a little bit here and I start with the darker dragon red and start painting the insides of the open mouths here, uh, as well as these uh, skin flaps on the side, which almost looked like a little bit torn to me, so I kind of went with that and had uh, strips of red showing through the skin flaps with bits of green. Uh, I kind of liked the final look, so I kind of left it. Seemed to also fit in a little bit with the lore of Hydras as uh, in Dungeons and Dragons as creatures uh, created after the death of a dragon god. Uh, it, it just seemed appropriate to have this sort of effect uh, in the flesh around the mouth. And it just looked cool, so, you know, kind of, rule of cool is a perfectly valid excuse for doing just about anything uh, with these kinds of things, so, yeah, that, that's a, a big part of my motivation as to why I did it is. It just looked cool, and so I went with it. Uh, next, I'm coming in with the matte black to start doing the base for the eyes. Uh, I just coat all the eyes in black, as well as a little bit on the eyelids, which just help the eyes stand out a little bit more prominently. Uh, I probably didn't need to do this step with how big their eyes are, but it's part of my process for painting eyes, and I didn't want to mess with that, so I went ahead and did it anyway. And there are a lot of eyes on the Hydra. There's a total of five heads, and each head has four eyes. So, you know, you can do the math. I don't feel like doing it, but <laughs> uh, there were there was a lot of eyes. It didn't take too long because I just stuck to the basics and did it simply. Uh, hit some black, then come in with the matte white, uh, not uh, what I usually go with, but decided to work with it this time. It is a little bit bright. Should probably use my mummy rubs like I usually do, but uh, I kind of like just started using this one and just went with it, but it didn't turn out terrible, so I'm okay with it overall. Uh, but next time I need to remember to use more of my creamy color rather than this bright white. It's a little bit too stark. Uh, but just going along and hitting all these eyes, doing my best to keep it neat, but doing a little bit of repair work. That's one of the other reasons I do the black, because then if I make a mistake with the white and it goes over a little bit, I can correct it with the black rather than having to correct whatever original skin tone, or in this case, scale color, is underneath there. Uh, it makes it easier to just get everything uh, the way I want and help me fix any errors I might have made a bit more easily. Just going through, covering everything up. Uh, the, the eyes are one of the areas I was a little bit worried about with the FDM, but they actually turned out reasonably well. You can't really see much of it. I don't even know if you'll be able to tell in the video very much. It's kind of hard to see the layer lines uh, just on the screen. It's a lot more pronounced in person, but it doesn't really show up all that much here. So 
I suppose that's something to be happy about. And uh, I think that also choosing to go with the airbrush for the majority of the scale work was a good idea because it prevented me from having to do anything like washes or dry brushing or something like that on FDM, which is notorious for making layer lines stand out a lot more than normal. Whereas the airbrush is very good at flattening things out. Normally that's not an effect I want to go for, but in this case, it really helps to sell it. And the art style makes it look, with this kind of color scheme on the airbrush, uh, a little bit flatter and maybe a tad more cartoony or comic book style, uh, just with smoother shading. Uh, but it also is very good at covering up those layer lines and making them a lot less obvious. Uh, so then I'm coming along here and this next step is just me hitting all the teeth and claws with the skeleton bone base layer just to get that going. I'm not worried uh, here about being too thick with my paint, I'm just kind of slathering it on and making sure it's only where it's supposed to be because if my paint is thick enough it will help obscure layer lines. So uh, with thick details like these stubby toe claws, I'm not worried about it, and I'm just slapping it on nice and thick. And I'm kind of doing the same thing here with all of the teeth, because the teeth are one of the areas where the failures of the FDM really kind of showed through. Uh, some of the teeth didn't form right, they had like a little extra protrusions or had flattened off funny. It's just definitely the, the point, like those fine details with the teeth and the points that the FDM just didn't quite hold up. And I'm sure if uh, different printing techniques were used, this could be alleviated. Uh, well, there's all sorts that you could do. This also isn't like necessarily the highest resolution an FDF, FDM printer could have printed this at. Uh, I think it was printed at, uh, I, I'm not actually sure uh, what the resolution was, but I know it wasn't the highest resolution that can be achieved on the printer it was printed on. Uh, it was just the uh, narrowest nozzle that uh, the guy had, so yeah, but it, it definitely shows on these teeth here. So that's something to keep in mind with FDM. Is it, it can do general shapes like this pretty well, and you can work with it. And I have seen some fabulous looking FDM prints online, and you can certainly get great quality out of it. But there's just some things that resin is a lot better at handling, and uh, thin, fine details like these teeth is one of them. So coming through, I'm nearly finished up with the miniature at this point. I've just got these teeth going in. Uh, this is the last head. It's definitely interesting working on a creature with multiple heads like this. I haven't really done that before, so certainly something interesting to work with. But after I get all of that on, I take a little bit of my homemade burnt umber wash and hit all of the bone bits to give them a more natural and slightly aged effect. You know, make it look like they've been used. Apply it to all of the teeth as well. Try and be careful not to really get it anywhere it's not supposed to be. Just coat everything as best as possible. This is the last step after I get all of this on. I set it down to let it dry, uh, which you don't need to sit through because of the power of editing. Here I, this is my preferred uh, Vallejo matte varnish, and I give it this whole thing a uh, thorough coating, you know, which helps tamp down on the shininess I got from airbrushing the inks and brings a whole lot of it together and gives that final look that I really like. So here are the final images. I'm really happy about this one, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I know that I have gotten a lot more subscribers over the last couple of weeks, possibly due to the comment I left on one of Jazz's videos, so I want to take this opportunity to say hello and thank you for joining my community. I look forward to having more people around to enjoy my content. So if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see any of my future content, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever any of my future videos get released. And if you're interested in helping to support me directly, there is a Patreon link down below, as well as a link to my Etsy store where I occasionally put 
miniatures I painted up for sale. It's a little dry at the moment, but I hope to rectify that over the next uh, few months or so. And also, if you want some behind-the-scenes uh, pictures and updates, you can check out my Facebook page. That's where I was posting a little bit about my allergy issues and when I started painting stuff again. So if you want to keep up to date, that's the place to do it. Go check that out. There's also a group attached to that Facebook page that you can join if you want to chat about more stuff going on with my videos. And with that, I really do hope everybody enjoyed this. I really enjoyed getting back into the painting after being on a hiatus for a little bit and hope to do a lot more soon. So I hope everybody has a good day and I hope to see you next time.